look at how to read fast. And since I taught myself, uh, I don't really have any formal course on it. So what I'd like to do in this particular segment is to just go over how I learned how to read about as fast as you can turn the pages. So the first thing I want to do is handle the theory. Most people think that you want to start with the process, but if you understand the theory, then the process makes sense and you'll stay with it. So it came in, uh, on some studies that I did with a guy named Prigogine, and, and Prigogine won the Nobel Prize in 1977. It's about dissipative structures. And what he pointed out was that anything that's that what they call basically an open system and, and almost everything is open and, and it takes in energy and it dissipates energy so uh, anything alive has energy coming in and energy going out and that's all great except that if you overload the system if you start to overload the system and too much energy comes in this is what is known as creating basically perturbing the system. So what you want to do here basically is you, when you overload it, all of a sudden it gets so too much coming in. When too much is coming in, then you, you can't basically, when you do that, you, one of two things can happen. One thing is it can die, and that often happens, or just when it's about to die, it all of a sudden jumps to a much higher order or relaxes to a much higher order. I like the term relaxes because what happens is that when it was getting too perturbed, it couldn't stand it. But once you jump to the next level, it takes it in easily. Now, what's really interesting is that when you stop pushing this energy through, this doesn't go back. It has structurally changed. It's what is known as a, a whole new... Uh, entity has taken place. And if you look at the brain, the brain weighs 2% of the body weight, but it takes in 20% of the oxygen and blood flow. So you, your blood and everything goes through there. So it's a classic thing for the theory of perturbation. So that when you overload it, you start to move it around. And so my thought was that if I wanted to know how to read really fast, that I had to consciously perturb my system and work on it, work on it, work on it. So that's exactly what I did. And it took me, it truthfully took me a long time to do it. Although it doesn't now, I had my wife and a couple other people do it. And within an hour, they were able to jump to the next level. And <laughs> unfortunately for me, when I did it, I didn't have anybody to teach me. And it took me about an hour a day for about eight months. And then all of a sudden, it was like, bam, and it was just there. So now I'd like to just sort of show you how I did it. But the idea is what you're going to do is spend the time just perturbing the system and just trust it. So you're overloading your system. So if it doesn't make any sense, you think you're not getting anything, just think what you're doing is you've still got the small order and it hasn't jumped yet. But it will jump if you perturb it long enough and, and, and forcefully enough. So the next thing to do is once you understand the theory of dissipated structures that you're going to overload your system until all of a sudden something pops, then the next most important thing is to find a place where you are going to be able to do this with comfort and feel like you're really going to focus on the book. I have a desk that I use, I have a certain place I do it, and I find for me I have to do it in the morning. When it gets later in the day, I lose my ability to do this at the, at the speed and concentration. So early morning for about three or four hours is, is really the best time. And so early morning, I find it, I take out the book or books. In this case, we're, we're picking out a book called uh, Crucial Conversation, Conversation Tools for Talking When the Stakes Are High, okay? So I would put that in the middle, and, and you just write it in the middle. As, as Mr. Fuller said, you can improve on the middle, and so you want to start in the middle. And I've got that group, and then I put down the time, the date, and I would put the date down here too so I know when it is. And if I need to, I could put the author down. So then I have that in the center. Once that's in the center, then the rest of this sort of looks at uh, 
you know, the book. And normally what I would do next, and it depends on the book, and when you get to get good at this, you'll take the entire book. In this case, I'm just going to ask you to just do one chapter. You'll get used to it, and, and normally what I would do is take, in this case I believe there's 12 chapters, but in this case we're just going to take the first one, and this, was, this chapter is about basically uh, what is a crucial com what what's a crucial conversation so I would just put that right in here you know what is a crucial conversation so we're just going to do one chapter this may make it easier for you uh, so I'm just so the issue now is what is a crucial conversation so then the next thing you want to do is is go through and break the book binding because the binding is going to slow you down if you haven't done that. So that it's best just to break it, get it figured out where it is. And in this case, it's uh, the first chapter is only 16 pages, so it shouldn't take you very long. And so the way you do it is you, you don't try to read across. You have to read down. You'll get used to it, but in the beginning it's going to seem a little weird. But you take your hand and just run it down the page. So you just go like this. And then you turn the next page. My finger something that slows me down, but you just keep going. Eventually, you may not even use your fingers, but I. To start with, this is the way I would do it. So basically, that's it. And then I would sit down and then I would go, what is it about? And this is stuff about the stakes are high and what the types of situations. And you just put down whatever you can remember about that chapter. And you'd be shocked at how much you know. So that just write it down, just all you can remember. Don't try to get, you know, don't worry about it. Sometimes you're going to get more than others. And then, basically, you can do that with the whole book. That's just one chapter. In this case, there are 12 chapters. This probably took a little longer than normal because I usually do the whole book before I go back. You write this down, you've got to figure it out. Now, if the book turns out after I, then I go to the next page, get all 12 chapters. If the book's worth, worth it, you'll go back and read it again. I'll go back to the first chapter, look at what I've gotten, then I will take out a yellow marker, and then I would read it this time, and I read it a little bit slower. Now this may seem like a lot of work, but it's when you add it all up, it's you know you could do a book like this probably in an hour and a half. Uh, if you're just learning, it may take you a little longer than that. So then I'm going to look at crucial conversations. I look at what I've written here, and then I go back through and look for things that I think that need to be. Uh, you know, you know, written down. Nothing there seems to be. And if you go through this whole thing, you'll start to see what what else is there. Well, you know, what how do we usually handle them? Well, you know, we can avoid them. It goes blah blah blah. This is a lot of thank you for sharing. And so there's not, you know, there's not much in this chapter really. Uh, and you just keep going along, and then all of a sudden you're going to come up with a few things uh, where there really is some examples where you really do have some crucial conversations. It's ending a relationship, talking to a co-worker. So you might put all these down and add these in if you haven't got them in already. And then you're looking here, there's a claim. And one of the things you can look in this book, see it has headers, and you'll see those right away. Our audacious claim, you'll be able to look and see what is it basically. And, and you'll see what they're saying here is that master your crucial conversations and you kickstart your career, strengthen your relationship, improve your health. Blah, blah. So you, the, basically, this is what's going to happen. If you've got all this done, you're going to... And that's basically what this chapter is about right here. It's going to help you uh, uh, kickstart your career, strengthen your relationships, improve your health. And that's basically what it's saying it'll do for you. Okay, and boom, 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 boom. And, and it's the problems. The best companies are almost any crucial area. You start to look at safety, productivity, diversity, quality, blah, blah. This is really... Not a difficult chapter, all right? And then it gets into revitalizing a community, blah, blah. So basically, you'll have this, I mean, that's it. It's not going to be a difficult chapter. There's probably going to be like five or six 
uh, lines you can have on offer this for the whole chapter. And you'll have some, maybe, in this case, there might have been one or two pages of places where I would have some yellow lines. Um, some books are much more difficult. If it's a really strong book and you read the whole book and you feel that it's super, super important, you may take and go back through a little slower than that and then write it up the same way. And no book should take you more than three hours and, and you'll have it. Then you'll have your mind maps. If it's a really, really good book, you can then consolidate all of the chapters on one page, which is what I often do. And then I'll just go back through real quick and see if there's anything I missed. But overall, the average book should take, once you get really good at this, shouldn't take more than an hour. And a really, really tough book will take you three hours. And you can do it. And you can do it in an hour because I've seen it done in an hour. Cut.